According to Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic theory, the human personality is made up of three parts, the id, the ego and the superego. The id. The id is present at birth and is the seat of all emotional impulses and desires, especially your sexual and aggressive urges. Freud viewed the id as a cauldron full of seething emotions which knows no judgments or values. The id is illogical, immoral and driven to satisfy instinctual needs. Children younger than two years old are completely dominated by the id. For example, when Charlie wants something, he wants it now. He expresses his emotions directly and spontaneously. He kicks, he bites, he screams and cries. The id obeys what Freud called the pleasure principle. So the primary motive is pleasure and immediate gratification of needs. It pays no attention to the demands of reality or morality. Its motto is, if it feels good, do it. The impulses of the id are largely unconscious, meaning they're hidden from awareness. The ego. The ego strives to manage the id's desires in realistic and socially appropriate ways. It's the executive that governs, controls and regulates the personality. For example, Ben was stuck in a long meeting at work and he was growing increasingly hungry. Now Ben's id wanted him to walk out of the meeting and get something to eat, but his ego guided him to wait until the meeting was over. So Ben's ego controlled his instinctual demands by managing the timing and manner of their gratification. The ego operates from the reality principle. It governs reason, common sense and logic. Freud believed that good mental health depends on the strength and flexibility of the ego. Therefore, the goal of psychological therapy is to strengthen the ego. The superego. The superego usually develops when you are around five years old. It contains the rules and standards you absorbed from your parents, culture, teachers, religion and society. It's basically your inner judge or critic. The function of the superego is to contain the demands of the id through moral influence of the ego. For example, when Michael was shopping, he felt the urge to steal a chocolate bar. However, his superego reminded him that stealing is morally wrong. The morality principle is a basis of the superego, so it's very focused on what is good or bad and right or wrong. It represents the traditional values and ideals of society as they are handed down from parents to children. If a strong moral code is not sufficiently sustained, then guilt is produced by the superego. Defence mechanisms. The ego is constantly trying to balance the impulses of the id with the demands of the superego. It's a little bit like being a referee, but it can't always resolve this conflict, which makes the ego very anxious. As a way of alleviating this anxiety, the ego develops defence mechanisms. Now, defence mechanisms are unconscious behaviours used by the ego to protect itself from this internal conflict. Some defence mechanisms protect you from the instinctual impulses of the id, and other defence mechanisms protect you from the external threats of the superego. For example, Rachel entered psychological therapy with crippling social anxiety. At the age of 45, she still lived with her parents and remained a virgin. Her parents were very religious and imposed a strict moral code. Sexual needs and desires were forbidden and seen as dangerous. Simply being aware of the sexual desires of her id would put Rachel in danger of painful shame and guilt at the hands of her superego. Rachel therefore managed to keep her sexual impulses repressed. She also frequently reverted to an earlier and more childlike pattern of behaviour. She held dinner parties for her china dolls, sucked her thumb and had temper tantrums if her mother didn't cook her favourite food. So we have a few defence mechanisms here. First, Rachel is both blocking and denying her sexual urges, which are the defence mechanisms repression and denial. In terms of her behaviours, there's also a movement back in time to an earlier stage of development, which is called regression. There's a famous quote by Sigmund Freud, Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. 
What Freud is saying is that emotions that the ego cannot acknowledge for fear of their impact on the mind are repressed and expressed via different defence mechanisms. Now, there are many different types of defence mechanisms, so if you'd like to find out more, click on the video on the screen now, and I look forward to seeing you soon.